In this video, we are going to start talking about Unit 4, which is right triangle trigonometry, and we're going to be looking at Lesson 1 and solving problems about right triangles. So first thing in the first activity, um, you will want to write down as many equations as you can having to deal with these two similar triangles. So we've got these two triangles are similar. Write down as many equations. So proportions and equations about the sides and angles as you can. Pause the video and then come back. So you could set up um, some proportions about similar sides. So if we just put some dots on these sides to say which ones are corresponding. So AB is corresponding to DE. BC is corresponding to EF. And AC is corresponding to FD. So that would help us write some proportions here. So you can divide any corresponding sides from one triangle to the next. So I could do AB divided by DE. Okay, so I went the one dot in the big triangle over the one dot in the smaller triangle. So then I could pick AC and compare that to FD. Okay, so from going big triangle to small triangle. And you could even do that with um, BC. So I'm just going to add another equal sign here and do BC over um, EF. So you can take any two of those. Okay, so we could write this one would be fine. Okay, that would be one proportion you could set up. This would be one proportion you could set up. And then you could also set up um, the first and the last. So you could have this one equal to this one. And you could also flip these upside down. Okay, so you could have DE on top over AB and then equals FD over AC. So going from small triangle to big triangle. Okay, and then again EF over BC and any two of those set equal to each other would be fine. Um, another thing you could do is compare within the same triangle. So we could go AB compared to AC. So I went one dot over three in this triangle, and then I would go one dot over three in this other triangle. So DE over DF. And you could continue doing that. Um, you could do one dot AB over two dot BC equals one dot ED over two dots EF and so on, okay? So comparing within the same triangle and dividing the same, so dividing two sides in the big triangle and then two sides, those two same sides in the small triangle. And then angles, remember, in similar triangles are equal, so angle A would equal angle D, okay? So first letter, first letter, middle letter, middle letter, so angle B is equal to angle E, and then angle C is equal to angle F, and so on. So those are some um, things you could do, you could come up with some other stuff, um, too, so that's not an exhaustive list. Um, all right, then on the next page, you've got, um, or sorry, on that same page at the bottom, so determine, um, the value of the missing side here, okay, so find the value of X, find the value of Y, find the value of Z, and that's if you can, if there's not enough information possible, what else do you need to know? Um, one hint is to look at your purple sheet. Okay, so there's um, some stuff on your purple sheet that might help you. So try this. If you get stuck, you can push, um, well, pause the video, try this. If you get stuck, you can push play for an another hint. All right, so on your purple sheet, you probably saw um, Pythagorean theorem. And so if we have two out of the three sides of a triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem to find the third. So remember, Pythagorean theorem is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. I'm actually going to get rid of the circles here. So remember that the C value is the one across from the 90 degree angle. So I'm going to draw an arrow across, get that. That's my C. So I'm going to plug that in for C. So I've got X squared equals, and then these other two sides are the legs. So we'll do 3 squared plus 5 squared. Doesn't matter the order you put those in. 
So if that helps you do that, you can pause the video, get finished, and come back. All right, so then we've got x squared equals 9 plus 25. So x squared equals 34. And then we would square root both sides. So we'd get x equals the square root of 34. This one is a right triangle as well with two sides. So we'll look at the hypotenuse here is 6. Okay, so we'll do 6 squared equals y squared plus 4 squared. So we get 36 is equal to y squared plus 16. Subtract 16 from both sides. And we get 20 equals y squared. So then we will square root both sides. And then um, we're going to do something called simplifying radicals in an upcoming lesson. And that's where you break down these radicals into prime numbers and find if there's any double roots because a square root cancels a squared. So in this one, it was just 2 times 17. Okay, so neither of those are there twice. So this one doesn't simplify. So square root 34 is the simplified version. For 20, we end up with 2 times 10. So 2 is prime. And then 10 is 2 times 5. So then both of those are prime. So then we end up with um, two twos here. Okay, so we write it as 2 squared times 5. So then you can split this radical and you get square root of 2 squared and then square root of 5. So square root of 2 squared, the square root cancels this squared and we just get a 2. And then we have that square root 5. So square root of 20 simplifies to 2 square root 5. So you can try that. Um, I would accept square root 20 right now as well, but we're going to be looking at that in some upcoming lessons. So square root, whoops, that's not the 6. Okay, so y is square root of 20 or 2 square root 5. And you could also do the decimal version as well. Then in this one, we actually are missing this side length. So we only have one side length given and we have two that we're looking for. Okay, so we don't know this one and we don't know this one. So we can't use Pythagorean theorem on this. So for right now, we're stuck on this one. If we had um, a triangle similar to this one, so if we saw another triangle with a 90 degree angle and a 50 degree angle, we would be able to work with that um, and set up proportions. Okay, or if we knew the length of this side right here, then we'd be able to do Pythagorean theorem. Okay, um, then what we're going to be doing um, in activity 1.3 is small group work. So if you are watching this at home, you can just do this by yourself. Um, but just think about some characteristics with your partner if you're in class um, that make a safe ramp. Okay, so spend one minute looking for characteristics or thinking about characteristics of a safe ramp as in to help a wheelchair, somebody in a wheelchair, get into a building. Okay, instead of stairs. So what would make a ramp safe? So you can pause the video and then come back and I'll show you a couple examples of some to help you. So if we take a look at this ramp, you can see like that is pretty steep. Okay, it's going at the same steepness of these stairs. If you tried to roll up that, that would be impossible. So something to do with kind of the steepness. Here's another one that's just very steep here. Okay, or this one that just kind of has, you know, a teeny, like, I don't know, is this supposed to be the width of the wheels? Is the wheelchair supposed to fit up here? So kind of the width of the ramp would also um, seem to be necessary. Um, and then where the wheelchair gets off of the ramp would need to um, be a, a decent sized space. Okay, so here's some characteristics that do make um, a safe ramp. So in this activity, just go ahead and design a ramp. So think about the width, think about the slope, think about the steepness. 
okay, and try and draw a ramp. And when we're drawing a ramp, like you can just kind of draw from the side view. Okay, so if we're kind of looking at this, you'll see that that's kind of the side view of the ramp. So you're going to be naming, you know, kind of how wide you're going to make this. And then kind of thinking about this angle, what would these lengths and widths be? And just go ahead and try and design a ramp for that. So drawing, you know, maybe it's just drawing the side view like this. Okay, and then kind of the width here the space up top, kind of whatever you want. It's just a sketch. Clearly that's not a very good one. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of label some things on it. Um, and so you're going to be designing one for a school that has four steps to the front door. Each step is seven inches tall. Okay. So sketch a design for the ramp. So I would start by drawing, you know, the steps. So four steps that are seven inches tall. Okay, so you've got a seven inch tall step. Okay, and you've got four of those. Okay, so then start by designing, sketch a design for your ramp. So once you've sketched a design, um, then you can push play on the video again. All right, so take a look at your um, design. So here's some requirements for ADA guidelines. Okay, so ADA guidelines are that ramps are required to um, any change in level greater than a half inch. Okay, so if the change if the change in height is more than a half inch, then there needs to be a ramp. The maximum slope of a ramp can be one inch to or a one to twelve ratio. So for every one inch of rise, there needs to be 12 inches of run. Okay, and so you could look at it that way. You can also look at it this way. So 12 inches of run, one inch of height, which creates a 4.8 degree angle. So it can't slope at more than a 4.8 degree angle. And then the width of the ramp needs to be 36 inches. At the top, there needs to be a five foot by five foot platform. Okay, so it has to be five feet by five feet kind of platform for the wheelchair to get off of the ramp. And then ramps can be no longer than 30 feet horizontally. So I'm gonna insert a picture of this in the next slide. Okay, so here are the um, ramp guidelines. So screenshot that or pause the video here or go back to this. And then just modify your ramp to um, include those characteristics. All right, so a couple of things that we learned in this lesson is that if we know two sides of a right triangle, they can calculate the length of the third side. And if we know um, the side angle, if we know a side and an angle rather than two sides, okay, so what happens then? So all right triangles with one pair of congruent acute angles are similar by angle, angle, okay? So if we have, you know, we know that this is a right triangle and then here's another right triangle. If this angle is the same as this, then these two triangles are similar, okay, by angle, angle. So then when we start to add in this, this, these ADA guidelines, we know that the slope, okay, is 1 and 12, okay? So for every 1 inch vertical, there's a 12 inch run, and that creates a 4.8 degree angle. So if we wanted to have a ramp that had a 3 inch threshold, okay, so this one has a 3 inch height that we need to get. If we, how long would we need this ramp to be horizontally? Okay, and then actually this one's wanting to know how long would the ramp itself be, okay, because here's the ramp. So since this one is three times taller, then this is going to be three times longer as well. So this is going to be 12 times three or 36 inches of horizontal width. So then we could do Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse here. Okay, so then they do Pythagorean theorem down here to find the hypotenuse. So you could find kind of all of the places here. So this horizontal would have to be at least 36 inches. If it went further than that, 
that would be fine because that would give you a less steep angle. Okay, so let's actually use this on one thing here. Okay, so this cool down. So pause it and try it and come back. So this one says that we have a curb that's four inches tall and a ramp to a sidewalk follows the same guidelines. Okay, what's the horizontal distance? So we want to know this part, okay, of this ramp. So remember, ADA guidelines is 1 to 12. Okay, so a couple ways you can do this is think that this is four times taller. So then this is going to be four times longer. So 12 times 4, which is 48. You can also set up a proportion. 1 over 4, so height over height, equals 12 over X, and then cross multiply. Now this next one said um, that they're going to be in a 1 to 10 ratio. Okay, so if the, four, if the vertical distance is 4 inches, okay, so the vertical is 4, what's the horizontal? And if we compare that to a 1 to 10, so again, you can look that this is a pretty easy 4 times bigger, okay, and then just multiply by 4. So you can take this distance and just multiply it by 4 to get 40 for that horizontal. Or you can set up a proportion. 1 to 4 compares to 10 to x, and you can cross multiply and get x equals 40.